things from here on out. That's what she does. Not like this. There's so much we... Guys, you know me. I'm... I'm no good at endings. At letting things end, so, um... Let's not. So... Happy trails, Liz. And, uh... See you around. Welcome back to another episode of Gaming Bolt, guys. This is Nick, and today we're going to go over the full story of Elizabeth Sobeck. Uncovering the mysteries of the world before it was destroyed by the machines is what drives the story of Horizon Zero Dawn above all else. And though a lot of those questions have, of course, been answered, there's plenty more left in the upcoming Horizon Forbidden West to dig into. A key to most of those mysteries will be Elizabeth Sobeck, a character that died centuries before the first game began, but was and will remain crucial to the series' overarching story. As such, ahead of the Forbidden West's looming launch, here we are going to catch up on the full story of Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck in time for the sequel. One of the defining traits of Elizabeth Sobeck's early years was how quickly she rose through the ranks and gained expertise in the fields. By the time she was 20, she had earned her degrees and her PhD, and as a brilliant and young expert in the fields of robotics, engineering, and experimental physics, and not long afterwards, was sought out and recruited by Ted Farrow, the founder and chairman of Farrow Automated Solutions, or FAS. Within a couple of years, Sobek became FAS's most valuable asset, and her work drove the company as it made significant strides in the environmental fields. Led by Sobek's work, FAS designed environmental recovery operations, automations that were dubbed green robots, contributing significantly to dealing with global environmental crisis in the 2040s. During this time, Sobek also led the work on Operation Firebreak, an automated environmental control facility that was designed to deal with the potentially catastrophic activities of the Yellowstone caldera. But the late 2040s, however, Ted Farrow had set his sights on aggressive expansions for his company, and as a result, FAS began de-emphasizing the environmental work and moved into the manufacturing and supply of automated military platforms. Heavily disapproving of the direction the company had taken, Sobek resigned and started her own successful environmental technology company. This was followed by years of rivalry and outright animosity between Sobek and Farrow, with an increasingly greedy and reckless Farrow continuously harassing Sobek and her company with lawsuits. By the mid-2060s, however, Farrow had ended up in some hot water, to put it mildly. FAS had supplied large numbers of automated war machines to governments and corporations all around the world for years and had become the planet's largest corporation, with Farrow himself having amassed stupidly massive personal wealth as well. One particular swarm of Pharaoh machines, however, had stopped obeying its owner's commands and had essentially gone rogue, which could spell a lot of trouble in ways that Pharaoh couldn't even comprehend. Realizing that he needed expert help on the matter, Pharaoh dropped all of his lawsuits on Sobek as a gesture of good faith and asked her to meet with him, which she agreed to do. And when they met and she took stock of the situation, she learned that things were much more dire than anyone could have anticipated. The rogue swarm of machines had switched to its emergency protocols of conserving biomass as fuel, which meant it was consuming any and all organic matter at a rapid pace. Equally rapid was the rate at which the swarm was self-replicating, while with the ability to enslave and corrupt any and all enemy machines was added to its number as well. Most dangerous was the fact that Pharaoh's reckless instance all FAS machines had been designed with encryption that would take literally years to break through, and that there was no back door in their system either, which meant there was no quick way to shut down the machine. Sobek estimated that within 15 months, the rapidly expanding swarm of machines would have destroyed the planet's entire biosphere and killed all organic life, leaving behind a sterile and lifeless wasteland and 15 months was just enough time to break through the machine's encryptions and subsequently deactivate them. And so Sobek came up with Project Zero Dawn, an ambitious undertaking that was focused not on stopping the machines from destroying the planet, but on taking the time that was needed to break through their security and deactivate them long after life had perished. Following that, Zero Dawn would entail the detoxification and terraforming of the planet to make it habitable again, 
and then reintroducing life in all of its forms through preserved genetic stock. All of this would be achieved throughout a massive network of underground vaults and facilities, all run and overseen by fully automated super AIs. When Sobek first pitched this plan to Pharaoh, he balked at its audacity, unable to process the fact that there was no way to prevent the destruction of a planet. But though he initially refused to back it, Sobek told him in no vague terms that if he did not fully back and fund Project Zero Dawn, she would reveal to the whole world that it was Pharaoh who was responsible for the threat of the machines, and following that, he acquiesced to her demands. Sobek soon met with the U.S. Joint Chiefs to staff to brief them on the situation and put the wheels for Project Zero Dawn into motion. Though she's predictably met with some resistance there as well, JCS Chairman General Aaron instantly understood the gravity of the situation and that Sobek's plan was the only hope the planet and the human race had of surviving, in some form, what was about to happen. Project Zero Dawn was approved. And at the time, so too, was Operation Enduring Victory. That too was devised by Elizabeth Sobek and was meant to be nothing more than a propaganda tool meant to buy her some time to finish Zero Dawn. With the machines destroying the planet rapidly, Operation Enduring Victory was meant to rally everyone to put up a fierce fight against it, with everyone being fed half-assed lies about Zero Dawn being a super weapon that would destroy all machines and that Operation Enduring Victory was meant to buy time for her and her team as they finished working on it. Billions died in the months that followed. Zero Dawn itself was to be overseen by Super AI Gaia, which would have several sub-functions, and each responsible for dealing with the machines and restoring the planet and reintroducing life in the years that followed in various ways. Sobek and her team successfully created Gaia and all of its sub-functions, with Operation Enduring Victory being just barely successful, Zero Dawn was finished. Things would ultimately end for Sobek when not long after the destruction of the planet, she would end up sacrificing herself by locking herself out of the facility she and her team had been working on for months, essentially sealing herself outside in the toxic wasteland the planet had become so that her team could remain underground safely and finish their work. Sobek's final moments were spent on a beach in front of her childhood home, where she died after her suit's environmental functions failed. Unbeknownst to her, Ted Farrow's machinist would lead to one crucial subfunction of Gaia being erased. But for the most part, Zero Dawn worked as it was supposed to, and thanks to Sobek's efforts, the machines were dealt with, and centuries later, life had returned to the planet. Of course, Sobek would prove to be crucial to the world's survival once again, when her genetic clone, Aloy, would stop the rogue AI Hades from once again stripping the planet of all life. Given how crucial the secrets of the world pre-apocalypse are clearly going to be for Horizon Forbidden West's story as well, it goes without saying there's plenty more we're going to learn about Sobek and her life. We probably haven't seen the last of her. Thanks for tuning in to Gaming Bolt, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Catch us for more on our channel by clicking the subscribe button below, hit the bell button for notifications, and catch every episode. Don't miss one. We'll see you next time on Gaming Bolt.